What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. There are a lot of fantastic Android devices on the market, but the two best, at least that are available right now, the Motorola built Droid running on Verizon's 3G network, and the Google built Nexus One running on T-Mobile's 3G network. So I want to sort of run through the specs and show you a sort of a head-to-head -head comparison about how these work. Generally when I do my head-to-heads, they're two different operating systems, so you can see how each one would do tasks uh, differently. Here we're running the, sort of the same basic operating system, so it's going to be a little bit different uh, how we run things here. So the difference is this droid is running Android 2.0 or 2.0.1 to be more accurate, whereas the Nexus One is running an updated version dubbed 2.1, and this is the first updates to 2.1. A little confusing. There are some key differences and I'll show you sort of as we progress. Now Google and Motorola have said that the Droid will be getting a 2.1 update but won't be having all of the same features. We'll cover all those sort of as we continue. Let's go over some of the specs. So for the US carrier for each of these, this is Verizon exclusive and this one you can actually get unlocked but if you want 3G you can only use it on T-Mobile. You can use AT&T's Edge service if you'd like. Now Google has also said that there will be a Verizon version of the Nexus One, further complicating your decision, uh, coming out sometime in the next few months. So from a price standpoint, which is really everybody sticking with their wallets nowadays, the Droid is gonna run you $199 with of course the two year contract. The Nexus One is gonna be $179 with that same two year contract. And that's again with uh, T-Mobile versus Verizon. Uh, size and weight here, you're looking at about 5.96 ounces on the Droid as opposed to the 4.59 on the Nexus One. Or speaking of sort of size, let's do a real quick size comparison so you can see the difference. The Nexus One is notably thinner. It's probably one of the thinner smartphones I've seen, but the Droid is by no means chubby, but it does have that extra girth because of the slide out keyboard. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's continue with some differences here. Um, included in the box, you're gonna get a 16 gigabyte micro SD card with the Droid, and you're only gonna get a four gig with the Nexus One. Screen size, they're both 3.7 inches, and they have the same resolution of 854 by 480. CPU speed and RAM are sort of where some of the bigger differences are as well. The Nexus One has a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor, whereas the Droid has a 550 megahertz um, processor in it. From a RAM standpoint, the Droid has 256, whereas the Nexus One has a significantly different 512. Uh, they can both multitask, they're both running the same operating system certainly, they both have Wi-Fi and GPS, 3.5 millimeter headset jacks, um, and all the rest. Let's talk a bit about camera. The Droid has a 5 megapixel, 4 time digital zoom with a dual LED flash. And the Nexus One has the same 5 megapixel sensor with only a two times digital zoom and a single LED flash. So there you go. The, they both have a, sort of a rudimentary autofocus as well. So enough about all the specs. Let's show you how they both work. Now from a purely uh, statistical standpoint, you'd think that the Nexus One has a big advantage because of processor and RAM. But let's see how that actually translates out. So first let me show you that these are both going to be have all their tasks and all their applications sort of killed. So I've got a third party application here called Task Killer. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down everything. So you can see that we're starting from all of our free available RAM. Now some programs are gonna load up on their own to make things running. Like we'll see on the Nexus One, it's gotta load up live, live wallpapers and things like that. But I wanna sort of start from a baseline zero so you guys can see that everything has been shut down. So with everything closed, we're looking at an available 140, um, megabytes and 109 here on the Droid. So a bit of a difference. Let's go ahead and close these. Um, some of the differences that you're going to notice as well, I think is going to be the navigation. You can see right here, I'm having a hard time even pushing the buttons. I am not a fan of the capacitive buttons on the Nexus One. They're oftentimes not very responsive. You have to, you can't really use, you can use your forefinger that much. You have to actually use your thumb and really hit it. Uh, they're pretty responsive here on the Droid. On the Nexus One, you can navigate with the scroll ball here with the Nexus One, you're sort of limited to uh, your finger. So some of the 2.1 updates. Well, you can see the sort of zooming lines in the background. Those are called live wallpapers. And they don't really add any sort of functionality, just sort of fun to look at. Uh, in addition to 2.1, you get a few more home screens. I only have uh, three home screens here, unfortunately, and I've got actually five, I believe, on 2.1. 
Uh, now you will be getting the same home screens on two, when 2.1 comes to the droid, so you will get your same five. You're also gonna get this new design, sort of scrolling uh, applications dock here. It looks a little more simple here on the, uh, on the droid. Nothing terribly fancy, just some graphics cues. You're also going to get access to multi-touch. The browser will be a full multi-touch browser, um, which is not currently the case on the Droid. On the unlocked version called the Milestone, it is, but there are third-party browsers right now called Dolphin, for example, that will give you multi-touch. When 2.1 does come to the Droid, it will be endowed with multi-touch. So I'm not gonna hold that against it right now. So let's do some speed tests for browsing. Um, they're both running right now on the same Wi-Fi network, and then we'll sort of shut down the networks or shut down the Wi-Fi and we'll see how they compare on their own 3G merits. Let's go ahead and open up the browsers on each of these. It should default right to Google. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch technobuffalo.com on each of these. And Technobuffalo has been loaded on both of these before, so it'll be a test of a site that you visit uh, on a more regular basis. All right, so I'll try and hit these both at the same time which is more difficult than you think it would be. All right, and we're off on both of them. And again, running on the same Wi-Fi network. Looks like the Nexus One is displaying the content first. The Droid was pretty close behind. The Nexus One is done, and the Droid is still loading. And it's done. So finished just a little bit behind. Not much, but there was definitely a noticeable difference. Let's see how the processor and the RAM handle scrolling here. If you Scroll very quickly, does it keep up? It does appear to keep up. You don't get any sort of that checkerboard pattern at the bottom, which I find very annoying, and sort of a sign of a slower processor. Uh, none here, of course, on the Nexus One as well. If you don't see it on the Droid, you wouldn't expect to see it on the Nexus One either. Okay, so next we're gonna load up a website that I've never visited on either of these devices. So it'll be sort of a raw test with nothing stored in the memory, nothing cached at all. We'll go to comedy.com, which I assume is a site. So we've got it queued up, ready to go, we'll go at the same time, and this will be again a test on the same Wi-Fi network of the speed and see if we get the same result that we had last time. Alright, and they are both off, loading comedy.com, which has never been put on either of these. Again, it looks like the Nexus One's got a slight edge, but the droid appears to be pretty close behind. Nexus One is done, and the droid is still loading. You can probably start counting, so maybe two or three seconds uh, behind. So we did see the same results. Now here with 2.1, we do have native multi-touch. We do not have native multi-touch here, though, on the Motorola Droid. So let's turn off Wi-Fi and try one more test, and you can compare network to network. So if you want to pick these phones up as they are right now, T-Mobile versus Verizon, let's see if there's a difference. Okay, so we're going to load technobuffalo.com again, again using Verizon's. 3G EVDO network and T-Mobile's 3G HSDPA network. Let's go ahead and hit them both at the same time and see if we can get a winner. So they are both off. They look to be pretty close to the same. Looks like the Droid is actually a little bit quicker now. Uh, it's actually showing content much earlier than the Nexus One is. Appears that the Nexus One made a quick comeback. It's a head-to-head -head epic battle here. They both appear to be in almost exactly the same place. You can see that yellow bar across the top on each. And the Droid actually finished first and the Nexus One is still loading. And there was a reason that I wanted to show you this. In all the websites that I loaded, Verizon's network was faster than T-Mobile's. And that's despite the significant processor advantage of the Nexus One. So if you're using Wi-Fi, like you saw, you're gonna get faster load speeds on the Nexus One. If you're using just your 3G network, you are going to be a little bit quicker on the Verizons. And I do have um, pretty much full bars of 3G service on each. So something to keep in mind. So let's see now how these load programs. And they've had both the same applications are loaded on each. So let's see how they load the same things and see if there's any sort of speed difference. So we will load, let's say we'll launch Android Marketplace at the same time. We'll see if there's any difference with either of these. So a little bit quicker on the Droid, actually. The Nexus One is still loading. And again, we are not on Wi-Fi. We're still using the 3G connection. So there you have it. Once again, another 
sort of shock at how much faster uh, Verizon's network is than T-Mobile's. Let's go ahead and launch another program. Let's go ahead and try uh, Calendar, for example. So actually a little bit quicker on the Droid, not much. Let's launch a few more and we're using the same program at the same time, so the same amount of RAM is being consumed on each. Let's go ahead and pick something different. Let's go ahead and launch, let's say the gallery on each, and you'll see a difference in the gallery too between the 2.0 and the 2.1. So pretty close, they show things differently, but you know, relatively even as far as how they, um, how quickly they launch. So let's talk about a few more things and try not to make this an hour long video. There's so much we can cover here. Uh, camera quality I found to be almost identical on each and that includes um, camcorder quality. So that's sort of a wash I'd say. I really do like the buttons, much, same having that trouble again, the buttons much more on the Droid. Now if you prefer a QWERTY keyboard, the Droid's gonna be your best option because of course it has one. I'm admittedly not a fan of the QWERTY keyboard on here, the physical keyboard. The keys feel a little bit mushy, and I think this D-pad has taken up a lot of unnecessary space. I actually prefer to type on the full QWERTY keyboard that you can use here. And you can type either in landscape or portrait using the on-screen keyboards on each. So they're both pretty much the same experience. So if you have to pick a device, you know, it's really, again, going to be your choice. If I had to choose one uh, today, I would probably pick the Droid running on Verizon's network. I found it to be a little bit more reliable than T-Mobile's and a little bit more widespread depending on where you are. Now, it's not to say I haven't been happy with the Nexus One. It's a fantastic phone. If you get great T-Mobile service where you are, it's certainly worth considering. Um, your best bet in the long run may be to even wait for the Nexus One to come to Verizon. You can get the best of both worlds. So guys, I wanted to give you sort of a abbreviated head-to-head -head of the two big shot Android devices on the market right now. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.